Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce Let's Talk Business Podcast <laughs> with um, Tabitha and today our guest is going to be Howard Johnson from 707 Management. How are you today? Good morning. I'm, a, I'm alive and well so the, the rest is just extra. At the least I have a good day every day. Well, all right. We put our feet on the ground and we are ready to go. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking a little bit about re reassessing, re-engaging, restarting. And um, so we're going to be trying to figure some things out. I guess you're going to tell us some things that we need to know. But first, we're going to go ahead and thank our sponsors. Southwest Airlines is a proud air travel sponsor of Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce. We'd also like to thank Premacore Business Solutions. So how are we going to go ahead and jump right into this, right? Okay. I mean, I, um, <laughs> I took a little bit of time and did a, a, a little bit of research, you know, just to I didn't have a bunch of time to, to think about it. So, you know, pretty much what I'll talk about today is kind of what I went through because I'm a business owner. And during this time, you know, I had to take a step back, look at my business, see exactly what I offered. And if it was going to one, make me money and two, be able to sustain me, you know, during the time where everybody else is slowing down and working from home and some people aren't working at all. Right. And um, some of the options that are out there are, you know, it's just, it's really amazing. I mean, I can sit on here on the radio and kind of tell people some, some things, but they have a thing called self-employment, unemployment. Nice, right? So a lot of people <laughs> who didn't realize that they could still get unemployment because they're like, I'm self-employed, how am I going to do that? Yeah. But they, there was actually, an, they, when you went in there, I had to fill it out for my mom too. Mm -hmm. I had to help her through the process. And it did show a difference of self-employment mm -hmm. versus employment. Yep. And there was, um, there's so many people that actually um, go and do the application. Mm -hmm. And some of them did it wrong, so they got denied. Yeah. And yep. then some of them came back. So I um, actually triggered a response, triggered mm -hmm. an email, and it came back to them. And they said, um, go back in and do it again. Yeah. And when they went back in, they got it. Yep, yep. And it, it, it. The self-employment, unemployment, I don't know if I can say this on, on the air, but I mean, I'm going to say it. It's, it's paying out $807 a week. Nice. From, what in the world? From, from, Mar right. from March the 17th, and they have it now until, I think, July the 25th. Oh. But they've, they've made some changes in it, but if, if, if you think about it, $807 a week. Yes. So that's a look. For that's a healthy penny. That's, that's, that's six, first of all unheard of because unemployment normally you don't get that much money ever. <laughs> Sixteen thirty-two every two weeks yeah. in an economy where you're not having to drive, you're not having to travel. All you're having to do is pretty much maintain a, you know, a healthy level of food in the house. You know, and I mean even if you can't make your rent they're not going to be able to evict you. I'm not saying don't pay your rent. That's not oh, what I'm saying. Yeah, please. Okay, I'm going to need all of y'all to pay our bills. We're all, all, you got to make sure you have a good relationship with your landlord or your mortgage <laughs> company because <laughs> they will put you out. Yeah. <laughs> and all I'm saying is what we're talking about today is things that are out there for businesses during this time. And that's one of, that's one of the things that is out there. And if you haven't filed for it, then it's something you should look into. Because, I mean, ain't no quiet as kept. I got it. Yeah, so. see? Look, there you go. You <laughs> yeah. got it. So there's a lot of people that didn't realize that that existed. Mm -hmm. But um, there are deadlines to all of this. Yes, now. it is. There is deadlines to it. Um, I don't know the deadline for the unemployment. That, Like I said, I didn't have a bunch of time to research. Normally, I would have researched it and had answers for you on deadlines and everything. But, I mean, just, just go to it's uh, TWC, the Texas Workforce Commission. I don't know all of the, I don't know the whole website and link. That's okay, TWC. Yeah, you Just put the, TWC. TWC in the Google <laughs> search and do self-employed, uh, self-employed unemployment. And it should pop up. You'll fill out the login, put your social security number in and go from there. And it's it's not based on 
It's not based on your previous no, experience. It's no. based on your. It's not based on your previous job. Yeah. It's based on the fact that you were self-employed during a disaster. There you go. And so the government is providing help. So I mean. So that's pretty good because we can we hear and we talk we hear um, different reports about Canada and how they're how they're consistently giving money mm -hmm. to. Um, to their to the people who live in their their yeah. country so it's like okay so um if they're giving that money out why can't we get that money right yeah. but in some instances we are giving it out in a different their government is giving it to us in a different, in different way ways. we just have to go and get it because if you don't take it then guess where it goes it goes back in their pocket <laughs> exactly I mean, back in the kitty so, ones and zeros recreated all over again <laughs> i've always i've always had a saying in business i said i'm not finna chase anybody to take my money so if I'm going to pay you to okay, do a job... Okay, say for the people in the back. <laughs> I'm not going to chase anybody to take my money. You're going to have to put in the effort to come get it. So, so it's cool. Yeah. So that's what has to happen yeah, for sure. You're going to have to put in the effort to come get it. So, um, yeah. So we want to make sure that like, they know that. Because yeah. there's a lot of people that don't get, they don't get it. Mm -hmm. And so, and I say this because on the radio I talk about the fact that there's over a hundred... Um, was it a hundred billion dollars that is still remaining mm -hmm. for PPP loans that people are afraid to go and get? Yeah. And so, for whatever reason, they're not they're afraid to go and get it and stuff. And it's actually, you know, what are they going to do with that money? They're going to put it back, and then they're going to tell you next time we have an incident or something happens that uh, oh, we don't have any money. Exactly. And then it's all going to be gone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just have to read the rules and go and get it. So the money's there. So yeah. PPP actually has PPP and EIDL which is an economic injury disaster loan mm -hmm. and advance. So yeah. one one or and both the other have a um, due date of June 30th. Okay. Right. So if you, you have, your PPP has to be approved by um, the 30th, mm -hmm. but your um, but you have to complete your application on the advance and the loan by June 30th. Okay. So those are the, that's still two avenues that are open, you know, yeah. for that for that money. And but I'm, for the unemployment people, you need to go in this excess that. Yeah, you know? I was looking at the um, the EIDL actually right before we came in here. I was looking at the uh, email that we had on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually came from the chamber. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're not a member of the chambers, you should join because we have a lot of information that we put out here. A lot of people are getting a lot of good information. Hence, if you're listening to the podcast, you're there getting you some go. good information, and this is a direct result of the chambers. So. Right. Go to tcbcc.org and look for join. Take a look at some of the, the avenues. Like, for when I joined, I was like, I said, oh, I want to do that one. Oh, I want to do that one. And it was pretty cool. But so since I've been here, I've actually learned more than I've learned um, in going to other classes and webinars. So the fact that um, the chamber is willing to disseminate so much information that's powerful enough for us to be able to take it, capture it, and go out and, and execute according to the to what has been given in the outline, I think that that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So I know for me, um, I already have my business plan, but to understand it, I have to go back and it's a living document. Yeah. And so the for business plan overall, it's one of those things where people are like, well, um, I just read an article that says, "Should your business your business plan is just a one liner?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, That's wow. the business introduction. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's just the introduction. Like, it's, it's hi, just a, this is <laughs> <laughs> hi, this is. <laughs> it's just a one liner because what I think what's happening is that people are starting to you know, look at the business plan as just being um, overwhelmingly like insignificant in their mm -hmm. business. Um, a lot of people believe that the business plan doesn't matter, uh -huh. but the business plan is not necessarily meant, and you can you can uh, chime in, uh -huh. but is the business plan is meant for you to know, to understand your market and understand where you're going and how you're going there. So if you don't have a plan, exactly, you are going nowhere. It's like having being in a boat with one oar and, and wondering why you're not going down the stream. Yeah, and that's, it, that's exactly what a business plan is. The business plan was not set up for you to have everything planned out. It was set up for you to initiate and engage in thought about your business. So as long as you're engaging in thought about your business, looking at your business, having ideas of how you want your business to go, then it's it's a blueprint. It's a mm -hmm. great start. And that's what the business plan is. It wasn't to plan out everything because unfortunately in this world, things don't go the way we plan them. No, it doesn't. That's why a lot of babies are born. 
eighty so. percent of the time. <laughs> so we don't you know, for, plan if, out if your if your business plan worked out a hundred percent like you laid it out, then you need to be on this on this yeah, podcast telling us what to do. <laughs> what did we do wrong? I want to know. You know, but this is true. So that's why it's like that's always good. So business plan is part of it, and then an evaluation of um, how to go about doing, you know, accessing things that you would not normally have been able to access. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the chamber consistently sends us information about our programs and webinars, and then they do other ones that actually are supporting of that. Yeah. So here's the thing, so we know, talk about money. So, okay, so I've gotten, I got an email one day and it says, um, because of COVID, I don't know that we're gonna be able to return back. And I was like, okay, no problem. But the way it was worded, it made, I had to sit back and pause. And I was like, do you realize that all of us were impacted by COVID? So not just one person or the other. Mm -hmm. So I think that, I don't know why some people feel like they may be in a bubble to feel as though that um, they were the only ones that were significantly no. impacted. But even construction was impacted. Very much so, very much so. And had I not had a plan or <laughs> had made up some ideas in my mind of how I wanted my company to run, I would have slowed down, but thankfully I had a couple of projects in place, some escrow set up. So my guys that worked with me and for me, they didn't have to suffer. They didn't have to sit at home from work. And I had three three main guys, four guys. We all got tested and we all kind of kept in our, our little circle. I went to pick up the materials. I had the materials. I paid for the materials over the phone, had them delivered. So there was, you know, a lot of touchless contact during this time, but we were able to continue, you know, working on the, the properties and the projects that I had going on because I had a plan in place. I said, okay, this is how we're gonna do it. Um, we're gonna work six days a week. You know, this is what the pay is gonna be during this time. And I mean, some of my guys made some pretty good money during that time. The, yeah. the only issue for me is I didn't I, I wasn't able to create new business during that time you know so creating new business during during that time construction was just it was just at a halt and you know was it really because I'm, I'm well I guess the projects are still in place but I when I do the radio in the morning and mm -hmm. what I notice is that there was a lot of a lot of opportunities for construction mm -hmm. for the bids to start going yeah. now and but not to not to not to seriously go out and do the work I don't think and that's 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 the thing that I was going to speak about today when we talk about uh, reassessing re-engaging and restarting you know, those are the things you look at. You look at, okay, where's my business now? What's not making money for me? Okay, and then you look at what opportunities are out there. So when you look at the opportunities, it may not be an opportunity that's directly related to your business, but it's something you can do. And the reason I say that is because there may be an opportunity to do lawn care. Mm -hmm. And you might not be a landscape company, but you have a lawnmower and a weed eater, and you're capable of cutting grass. Mm -hmm. So if it's a contract for you to go do this every week at a place and make, say, an extra $100, $200 a week, then that may be something you want to look at to add to your portfolio. Because for me, I if I'm approached with the opportunity, I had a, a lady call me, she was like, hey, we have a property it's a company located in New Jersey. She said, hey, we have a property there in Houston that's coming up. It's going into foreclosure, but we need somebody to maintain the lawn. Is that something your company does? I'm a builder. I build houses. Okay. But will I go cut some grass? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so she, I was like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We, we, we do lawn care. And I have I have... I have zero turn lawnmowers and everything, but those are for my personal use. But they're gonna be they're gonna be used for business. As soon as she calls me back and tells me that property is ready to go, then I'm gonna jump on that property because So that'll be adding an additional revenue stream for exactly. your business that you would not have normally had no. had you not answered that phone call. I wouldn't have normally taken the landscaping job. I would have passed it on to somebody else. Hey, no, I got a guy that can come cut the grass. He he has a landscape company. Let me introduce you to him. But at this particular juncture, I'm like, okay, things aren't bad, but I still need to, I need to reassess. Mm -hmm. I need I need to reassess the situation and this is an opportunity to make some money. And 
that may be a test from this company. They may have a hundred properties that they want me to cut the grass on, and this is the first one to see how it goes. So, you know. That's a really good point. And I like the fact that you said that because um, on one of the segments we talked about the fact that they, people need to take a look at what they have in their, in their wheelhouse, in their toolbox, mm -hmm. and figure out how they can go out and monetize that. Because right now, there was one gentleman I just had a cutting board done. Well, actually, my cutting board and a chest, and a chest um, board done. Like real wood, about it. Um, one of them is like an, um, two inches thick. Mm -hmm. It's heavy, really, really nice. Yeah, it's real right? <laughs> but then he was like, "Yeah, it's really heavy, two inches." You know, the normal cutting boards may be like an inch or less. Yeah. This one's really solid, really nice, well put together. And in the course of all of this, he was doing woodworking as a side. Mm -hmm. You know, on a side thing was something that kind of released stress. Yeah. And I think that because of the pandemic, he actually is now turning that into a business. Mm -hmm. And so since we did it, and when he, we took the picture, put it out there on Facebook, he's gotten a ton of orders behind mm -hmm. it. So now he now has a new company. Yeah. And if it wasn't for the pandemic, and although I don't say, oh man, good good job for the pandemic. <laughs> we all were, we were, we were all getting reset. It was yeah. like being put on punishment. Mm -hmm. Go sit in that corner and think about what you've done wrong. But, um, it, but people went in and they looked at what they were doing and yeah. they're like, how can I make money? Because I need money to continue to come in to mm -hmm. feed my family. And he was able to do that. And I love that. I love when people go and figure it out. I met another lady who did mask. Mm -hmm. She was eight months pregnant when I met her, mm -hmm. and she was at the sewing machine every day mm -hmm. making masks. My mom did the same thing, and they just sold them out, sold out the mask, or they um, accepted donations because not everybody, yeah. you know, people are losing their jobs. Yeah. And so I just think that it's great that you were like. Yeah, come on, I'll cut your grass. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> I mean, and that that's the the first word that we had on the podcast was real sense. I'm a definitions yes, dude. And I like it. with me, I don't I don't get involved in the definitions because I don't think people know knows what it means. I just want it to be clear and to be simple. And reassess means just to consider or assess again, especially while a paying attention while paying attention to new and different factors. So, you know, people be like, oh, reassess. Oh, that's just to look at it again. No, it's not just to look at it again. It's to look at it again and pay attention to the new factors that are there. Because you can read a book and then you read it a second time. You'll be like, oh, I missed that the first time. Or you can, you, if you go over things over and over and over again, you know, after about the third or fourth time, you start, you may see some stuff that you didn't see the first time. Yes. And you can do that years later. So I started my business in 2013. As I take a step back and reassess now, I'm some, some couple years older. <laughs> <laughs> only six months, only six yeah. months. <laughs> I'm, I'm a few years older. And being older give, gives me gave me a different perspective on things. So a, in reassessing my business during this time, I had a totally different perspective when I looked at it. Mm -hmm. You know, from from 2013 to 2020, that's, that's seven years. Mm -hmm. You know, and reassessing it at this time, like I said, I just I was like, you know what? When I when I started this, I could have did it this way. And then I, I looked at past jobs. I was like, man, if I if I would have if I would have had this aspect that I'm thinking about now, then I would have made, you know, X amount of dollars more. So, you know, it gave me an opportunity to t take a step back and look at it again, you know, because there was some things seven years ago that I didn't know about business that I know now. There are some projects that I've been on where I learned different strategies or different right. techniques to do it that will, you know, that will cut down on the time, that'll change the budget. So, you know, I've, it, it's, it's reassessing my business and I'm just speaking for me. I can't tell anybody else, you know, what it will do for them. It just well, here, gave let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. It if just, you reassess things, yeah. man, you will come up with something totally different. And then we're not saying it's not a suggestion to say change what you're doing in business. Exactly. It's saying to take a look at it and see what you can add to improve and level up your business. Yeah. Okay, now see yeah. I tell you. It's not he don't tell you. That's exactly <laughs> it. But I was just gonna tell you about me. I'm I'm never the one to point the finger because like there's three fingers pointing yeah, back at you. Three pointing back at me. So you know, and three um, told me reassess my business. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So you know, I just talk about me. I reassess mine, and from reassessing it, I seen ways that I could, you know, not today, not tomorrow, but maybe next month, make money with my business during the time where people are 
interrupt people with jobs. Some of them are sitting home without jobs. You know, seven thousand people. And unemployment, um, unfortunately, I, if if I'm the bearer of bad news, then so be it. But um, unemployment is not going to be there <laughs> for, not forever. <laughs> so that's that's just a temporary fix. You know, when we talk about reassessing, and then you know, the next one in our in our list of things is is reengaging. Yeah, let's talk about that. You know, uh, reengaging is is the act of engaging something again so you know if you if you talk about engage let's talk about the root word of it you know engage means to occupy attract or involve whether it's someone's interest or attention and then another definition part two says to participate or become involved in so after you reassess then you re-engage or you engage your business you know, so you become involved in what you have going on. You say, okay, from the reassessment, and, and when you reassess, please take out a pen and paper and write down what you're thinking about. Don't, you know, for, for me, I'm at a certain age where I can't rely on my mind to remember everything that I that I thought about in the last, you know, 20 minutes or an hour when I'm thinking about doing something, because oh I... Gosh. It, I don't know about you, but I can set my keys now and be like, where did I set my keys? <laughs> or have your sunglasses on your head and <laughs> yeah, be, like, be like, I can't find my glasses. My phone in my hand. I'm like, what did I do with my phone? Oh, yeah, that's right here. <laughs> so when you take, you know, have a pen and paper when you're writing down this stuff, when you're reassessing, so that when it comes to the engagement part, then you're ready, you know, like, okay, I'm going to tell you something. All right, it, let's it, go. It's, it's, a, it's an example. So we're talking about engaging your business, which is the act of engaging, which is engagement. Right. So when you when you get when you get engaged or you're proposing, you come with a ring, ring. right? Mm -hmm. So you, you're getting down on one knee and, and and you're and you're getting ready to propose. Do the same thing with your business. Yes. Come come with come with the ring. Come get prepared. down on one knee. <laughs> <laughs> Make a form. You're making a formal agreement with to, yourself. Yeah, with yourself to do something. And I'm gonna tell you something, man. Uh, this is a plug for for a gentleman named uh, Holton Bugs and Edwin Haynes. They told me they taught me to work on my work on myself as hard as I work on anybody else's job. Okay, I'm gonna say it for the people on the left hand side because <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> I have this conversation with people about this all the time because here's the thing: we're on, we're in our nine to five jobs, mm -hmm. and we're out there trying to make that dollar yep. because we got to make sure we're sustaining. But we put so much energy into making that money for someone else. Mm -hmm. But when we say, okay, I want to strike out on my own, I want to do this business, so I'm going to work it as a side. You want somebody you, to give it to you. Then you treat it like it's a side hustle. No. And you don't, you give all your energy to your primary no. and not to your secondary. But here's the thing, you're the primary. Yeah. So why are you not putting forth all that effort that you give to someone else so they can make millions? So that you can go ahead and make your make your millions, you know. The program works. <laughs> when, people, when people are programmed to do a certain thing, they continue to do that right. same thing, you know. So, I don't talk I don't talk down on on school, but you know, in school there was a routine, right? Right. You got to school in the morning. Mm -hmm. You took a lunch at twelve, mm -hmm. and then you, you then you got to go home, right? Right. Okay, and then you may have had breaks in between, mm -hmm. going from class to class. So. Let me reassess that for you. When you go to your job in the morning, you get to work at 8. Mm -hmm. You get a 15-minute break here, oh you know, a 15-minute break there. Those are the times between classes. Then you get to go to lunch for an hour, maybe 30 minutes, you know, and then you get to go home. So elementary school, high school was conditioning you to oh, work. work a job. Yeah. So <laughs> the program works because most people go to college, get their college education, come out, and get a job. Right. And they're already conditioned to, to do that job. And then the fact that they have a college degree shows the company that, okay, this person's committed and they've been programmed already, so right. I can utilize them. Not say, I'm not talking bad about anybody. I'm just talking about a system that's been put in place for people to learn how to work. Because, unfortunately, this country needs people who are going to work. Right. We so we, everybody has a station. And some, and so it's you're an employee or an employer or mm -hmm. a, or self-employed. So one way or another, you have to in order to make money, you have to do something. Exactly. So what position do you choose to be in is is a question. Mm -hmm. And then 
The other thing is that when you are starting a business, are you starting the business with the intent to hire many people? Or are you are you starting the business so you don't have to be in in servitude of mm -hmm. someone else's business? Because that means that you're only employing one. Mm -hmm. And so my suggestion is always going to be take a look at what you're doing and see how you're going to duplicate that. Because if you're only there to create a job for yourself, you're going to wait work way more for way less when it's just a job for yourself but when you're creating when you're doing job creation for many more people that means that what you're putting in place is going to be able you're going to be able to duplicate it and there's more money with less effort because you're able to duplicate your efforts yep. so I do believe that people should probably look at that and but they don't always think about education as a conditioning no, thing right no it, but it is, but um, it is very unfortunately much so. it is it's and it's, it's okay it's okay because the program that they that they thought would condition you to work for somebody else is the same program that you can apply to have your own business. Exactly. Because I was a great employee, but I was unemployable because I was not a follower. So my program was conditioned for me <laughs> to be in business for myself, not to work for anybody. I work for people. I move up fast, I become management, mm -hmm. and then boom, it hits the fan. Somebody doesn't like the fact that I moved up so fast and I'm intimidating to them. So, you know, me, I'm like, well, you ain't gonna talk to me crazy. I don't care if you're the VP, the CEO, or whoever it is. <laughs> you know, so I was I was a great employee, but I was not employable because I was more concerned about me and what you know what i needed to do for myself and my family versus the employer you know, right they're okay but they're they're actually about fourth or fifth in my chain of command because <laughs> you know first comes god second is the wife third are the kids fourth is family and fifth is the employer right. some people put their employer second they're they're second they're they're above the wife and i'm like um, that, those are those people who go to divorce court very quickly. So, I mean, we know that that to be true. But that, you know what? You bring up a good point. So, as a male, as a man in the in the work workplace, you've had that experience, right? Yeah. As a female, I've had that experience, and I was like, and I sent my um my one friend, she um just got uh, laid off due to the pandemic, uh -huh. and um so she'd been with them I think 19 years, and she's like, I've never had to do this before. And I was like, 19 years, that's awesome. I said, I can't barely stay at any place for five. <laughs> I said, what the heck is wrong with me? My sister you look is- You like you're getting nervous not just like, talking about oh it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> because again, <laughs> according to the rules, the rules of engagement, I should be at a job for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. But I can't seem to keep a job. You know why? Because at some given point in time, the same thing you said is the same thing I said. Oh, you're not gonna talk to me like that. I don't know who you're talking to. I don't know where you get the idea that you can Come, come out of pocket like yeah. that <laughs> so and I remember I've had incidents where and I never 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 um, condoned violence but yeah. I threatened to beat the <laughs> snot out of one person, <laughs> one person talk to me like that again here mm -hmm. so there are things that we do yeah. <laughs> that we are un unemployable but what when I never thought of it like that from you, I thank you for that information because at welcome. least I thought I was in the o my own boat nah. say, with one oar talking about why can't I can't people, make it past five years. All the time, you ain't on that <laughs> ship by yourself. Well, I say you're not on that island by yourself, you know, because a lot of people say, hey, I'm out here on this island, I'm by myself. And you know what? I digress really quick because that's what the chamber is. And we've deemed this, we've coined this phrase, you're in business for yourself, but, but not by, by yourself. yourself. That means you have help, you know, it's your business. You run it, but there's help. There's information, you know, and and you're not on the island by yourself. You're not on the ship by yourself. There's other people that can help you paddle the ship. Yeah, it's your ship, and you have to do most of the work. But when you hit a wall, you can pick up the phone and say, hey, you know, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? You know, and then earlier we were talking about the, the government money, how, you know, if you don't get this money, it goes back to the government. Well, that's the same... Uh, same thing with Hub. The yes. He, um, historically underutilized businesses. Yeah, so with Hub, the gov the federal government gives money to these different en entities for different construction contracts. And if they don't go out and get minority participation, then that money that they give for the minority, the government spends on the contract will go back to the government. So people need minority participation. So during this time when you're sitting at home, relaxing, 
Go out and get these certifications, apply for them. And if you're a member of the chambers, call in, ask Ms. Thompson what you have to do. Hey, Ms. Thompson, uh, if you're busy, can you put me on the phone with somebody else that's a chambers member that knows how to do this or can walk me through it? Or can you tell me who I need to contact at yeah. that particular entity so that they can give me the information? And I, I will guarantee you one thing, Ms. Thompson knows the people who are at these different entities yes, I, I can guarantee that <laughs> and they and and if you tell them hey look i'm a member of the chambers and miss thompson told me to call oh yeah miss leandra tell her i said hi how's she doing blah, blah 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 they're gonna ask you a bunch of questions about it because not only does she knows them but they know her as well right so so and yeah. i'm glad that you say this because we always there are these conversations we have all the time i don't want to be certified i don't want to be placed in a box here's the thing i read something about the fact that they're, they put so much money out for a certain contract mm -hmm. and it was for women. Mm -hmm. And so actually there was a webinar to discuss why women left 0.25%. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, right? But when you when you do the calculations, million. it turned out to be, it turned out to be millions of dollars <laughs> left on the table. Yeah. They're like, guys, you gotta come and get this money. Yeah. So they set aside the money so that we can compete. Mm -hmm. We can be invited to the table and stay at the table. Mm -hmm. But unless we, unless we do the certifications and everything necessary in order to get to the table, mm -hmm. We will consist consistently have the door slammed in our faces and will never be invited to the table. Mm -hmm. And so people need to really, I, 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 the chamber will walk you through the process. Yeah. And then when I, when I went through one of the classes, you know, that one was bidding the, um, navigating the bidding process. Mm -hmm. When she was done, halfway through it, I was like, oh, I get it. It was like a big old light bulb went off in my head. And I was like, oh, I got that. But I was certified for some of other ones, but I wasn't certified for HUB. So now yeah. I'll be certifying for HUB because that is another avenue that I can utilize in order to, to do that. So I am starting my engagement <laughs> with with um, trying to get the HUB certification because yeah. I have the other ones. Yeah. So I think that people just need to understand that this is a way to skip the line. And, and hub is hub is a hub is an easy one to acquire. I mean, you're if you're in business by yourself, you should have. Look, I, I, I'm not gonna rub it in, but if hub is an easy one to, no, I'm just <laughs> look, but you if you're face. if you're in business, then you have all the necessary forms already. If right. you you know if you set up your business the correct way, you have all the forms that they need for you to qualify for hub. Um, and be being having a membership at the chambers get you these you know these these perks right you know <laughs> i just say they skip the line yeah. so you uh, you actually you get on a shorter list so that they can evaluate whether or not you fit and then they go to the longer list of all those people who did not come in with the chamber or come in through um, a certification mm -hmm. so yeah and that's that's just what that's the definition of of a member a constituent piece of of a complex structure we are complex. <laughs> we are complex. So you, as as a member, you're just a piece of this complex structure that the chamber creates, and the chamber is is a big network of you know a lot of entrepreneurs. I mean, some people have have uh, regular jobs, but they also have businesses too. So you know, and just going back to what we say, I'm gonna say it again. Hey, work on yourself, mm -hmm. you know, more than you work on anything else. Like if you had a nine to five, then put nine to five in on your business, you know, put eight hours in on your business. If you put eight hours in on a job, come yes. home, put five hours in. And then on the weekends, you know, work 10 hours on, on your business. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed by the results. Right. I did have a conversation with another young lady and she said um, she she was struggling I think she was struggling with trying to get her formulas and everything right for the business that she was creating. Mm -hmm. And so as I kind of walked her through and talked with her and I just gave her a schedule that she can, I said, this is an example of a schedule that might be able to be beneficial to you. Mm -hmm. And she said, I never seen it that way. Yeah. So it was an opportunity for her to reevaluate how she utilized her time. And when she can, when you can do um, time utilization for yourself, mm -hmm and figure out where your pieces fit and, and build a schedule. If you can schedule a 5 a.m. workout, mm -hmm. then you can schedule a 5 p.m. work on yeah, your business. Exactly. You know what I mean? So there's just different things that you have to put into place. So mm -hmm. I got a calendar, and I know they say, you have to go to the digital one. You can't do it on a paper. But paper and pencil is the easiest way to make sure that you retain the information. Yep. So I write out my schedule. I, put it, I, I schedule everything out. 
um, so that I know what I'm up against uh -huh. and then I fill in where I need to fill in for other things. So if I need to do um, personal development, then I schedule that in there. If I have to have my, and so all the meetings come in, but if I have an hour or a two hour gap, then I can just plug in for something else so that I can I can improve myself. Yeah. And then I'll I surround myself with people that are willing to, who are, who are interested in my success. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very big on personal development, and that's a good point that you made. When you're when you're working on something, there are there are people there that can help you because you know they say you know four sets eyes are always better than two, and they're, they're not talking about the glasses. I'm gonna say, mm -hmm. <laughs> not talking about putting on some glasses. Just getting somebody, and there's a it's a really really easy way to find somebody to help you. This is what you do. You call your friends, uh, the people that say they're your friends, and you tell them, hey, look, I'm starting a business. What do you think about that? And the one that says, oh, you'll be great at business, those are the ones that you want to ask about, <laughs> about <laughs> what you're trying to do. Now, the one that says, oh, I don't know about that business stuff, if you get any type of kickback from anybody, if you get any type of kickback from anybody when you tell them about your business, those are not the people you want to talk to about what your vision is because they're already behind you. And as long as they're behind you, they can't see around you to see your vision. You want the people who are standing on the side that are supporting you because the people standing on the side of you can see the same thing that you're looking at. So those are yeah. the people that you want you know, to be asking the questions. And they may say, hey, you know what? I don't know anything about that, but I have a friend that's doing the same thing that you're trying to do, and I'm going to give you their number. Right. And that's true. And I like that point because at the same time, I want to add to the fact that even though you, when you get that person or you get a couple people and they're like, yes, this is to be good. This is really good for you. This is in an alignment with where you're going. Mm -hmm. Understand, they're not going to be running this race with you. Oh no! And the point, no. and the reason why I say that is because they may, they may, um, they are your cheerleaders. They're the mm -hmm. ones that are validating the fact that you're going to step out, mm -hmm. out and do this. But whatever you came up with, your focus and your vision is your own. Mm -hmm. It laid on you. It is your part of who you are. So don't expect other people to be able to be along for the ride for the journey because not everybody's meant to go from beginning to end on your journey. They're only meant to be, you know, participating on the way, mm -hmm. right? That's, and that's that's really that's really why a lot of people aren't there at the end because you I won't say you outgrow them, but they're just not their destiny is not to riding through the gates with you on your vision their destiny was to give you enough courage to go ahead and step out yes and once they did that you have to move forward and keep continuing for it and unfortunately they may get left behind there are a lot of people that i seen when i first started this business that was on my team that it's nowhere in sight and actually they became envious once i got to a point mm -hmm. to where i had clients praising me and you know one guy used to he would, didn't really show me stuff but he was in the business and you know he thought he was showing me things and i got to you know i was i was always decent at what i did but i got great at it Right. And when I became great at it, it became a point of contention. A, yeah, for him. it became a wedge in, in our in our uh, contractor relationship. You know, and I'm like, man, for me, if I meet another contractor, I'm always, hey, look, hey, look, bro, if you need something, call me. You need a trade. You know, we can trade off trades. I'm not in competition with you. Right. Collaboration over competition. There is enough money out there for everybody. Yes. It's enough money, and, and I mean, I'm not, if, you, if you're if you doing a million dollar job, I'm not trying to pull you down, because one thing I learned, for me to make 500,000, somebody has to make a million. Yes. And I'm not, I'm not patting nobody pockets talking about what you got in your pockets. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy, hey look, I knew my SOW said that I was gonna make 500,000 coming into this, so what if you if you made 10 million off of it? I'm not mad, and you could've gave me more money. Yeah, he could've, but I, I agreed to this. Right. And this is this is okay. Because <laughs> yeah. there's all for like I said, I'll say it once again. For for you to make a million, somebody has to make two. Yes. And you, you have to be okay with that. In in yeah. business, you have to be okay with that. Yeah, because not everybody should be able to eat. No. But I mean so there's two things. One is that I've always gone to a job, so once I realized I was unemployable unemployable. <laughs> <laughs> somebody said, Well, what if you go to these jobs? And I said, I went to those jobs every day and I went and I will go there only to learn what to do and what not to do. So sometimes your job is your job is education. So if you're in a job right now and you're trying to do your side hustle, it's just some point for you to just pick 
pick and look, watch how the company is run. Mm -hmm. You take from it the good and leave the bad. And that is another part of education. And so that information that you gather from the current nine to five that you're doing today will actually translate into your business later if you apply it in the right way. So when I walked away from my employers, I was able to say, you guys are horrible <laughs> with employee relations. <laughs> so that's what I did. I put, I put together a whole entire platform that, that will not allow for that type of behavior in my company because I learned I was in school every day, nine to five for at least five years. You know what I said, at least five years. But then the other thing, <laughs> I'm just telling you. I was looking but to make sure. <laughs> five years, it's just only five years. But then the other thing was that I was given a very good example. I, I forget where I got it from, but I'm gonna tell you. They said, maybe it was in a book. Mm -hmm. But they talked about the fact that when you're doing something, just think of it like um, an arena. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we'll just say it's going to be track. Mm -hmm. And so you'll everybody comes and they're like, they pay for their ticket. And they um, you, um, they say they're going to go to the game. That's what it was. They're going to go to the game. And they go to the game and they say, hey, I'm going to go to the game. You want to go to the game? They say, sure. Mm -hmm. And then some people will be like, no, I don't want to pay. Mm -hmm. So then they get left outside the gate. Yeah. And then you go into the gate. So all the people who pay go into the gate and they go stand in the stands. Mm -hmm. And they're sitting in the stands and they're watching everybody do. And they're watching everybody run. They're watching everybody doing what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And then I say, hey, I want to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in doing what they're doing. And I turn and say, you interested? And there will be some people that say, no, nah, I'm just going to sit here and watch. Yeah. And then I go and jump on the field, yeah. right? And so when I go and jump on the field, so you're going to find that every there's a stations for, for everything. Everybody. And so what ends up happening is that you're not outgrowing people. Yeah. You're actually going after something that you see that they don't see. Yeah. And it's okay for them to go to the point in which they feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then as they watch you grow and they watch you do the things that you're doing, that, that can motivate and inspire them to do something very similar, but not your vision and, and focus. So yeah. I think that that's always really good. <laughs> it's like, so, that's yeah. awesome. I want to touch on a, on a couple restart. of things you said. Um, you know, the, the restart, you know, is, is just... It's just starting again, you know. Don't be afraid, because yeah. right now it's like, kind of scary. If you're if you're driving your car and it cuts off on you, you're not gonna just be like, oh, I don't know if I want to start this thing up again because it's gonna cut off. No, you're gonna start it really fast and try to get up out of it. <laughs> so do the same thing with your business. If things slow down, your business cuts out on you. Restart it, restart it. You know, begin again, start again. Reposition I mean, and restart, yeah, right? Because yeah. sometimes you just have to. That's so. That's part of the um, reassessing. That's why all of these were really good. They really fed into one another. Because I looked at the fact that, and I use your example for the car. So if you realize that um, you're you're trying to restart your car, but it doesn't want to start. Mm -hmm. So instead of it being in park, you put it in neutral. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so then in neutral, it actually kicks over. Mm -hmm. So it's just. If it wasn't for the fact that you reassessed your mm -hmm. current situation, you wouldn't have realized that it doesn't like park and something's going on with your gear there. But yeah. if you move it into neutral, it actually will work better. Yeah, and it's still, it, hey, you still get the same result. You yeah, know? and out of traffic. One thing I've <laughs> always told people, and this is about this is about seed, this is about um, repositioning, pretty much. Mm -hmm. If you go to a driveway, and everybody has seen a driveway or has some concrete there, and you look in the cracks of that concrete, and there's grass growing up through the cracks in the concrete, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure people have seen that. That's not good ground. But here's my point. Regardless to what type of ground you put your seed in, it will grow. Now, mm -hmm. if you put it in good ground, then you'll have good seed. You'll have good growth. You'll have a good product. If you put it in bad ground, you're gonna have a bad product. You're gonna have bad growth. But wherever you plant your seed, is guaranteed that it will grow. Whether it's in the cracks of some concrete or whether it's over on the grass where you want it to grow. Be careful where you plant your seed. And if you don't like the product that you're getting, take that up and reassess it, reposition it, re-engage, and then restart it. I like that because I we all see. I was like, why is this grass growing here? That makes no sense. Well, I thought this was concrete, it wasn't soft at all. Yeah. But it's true because even um, for me, I seen um, my husband pulling out the chain. I was like, is there grass in this chain? What's happening? And it, he was like, yeah, it grew inside the chain. So you're you're absolutely correct. I never thought about it that way. I though. mean, grass is a great example of seed. I mean, it. <laughs> It's so much deeper than than that, but you know, even if you plant seed and leave it, you throw some seed out the window on your way down the highway. Mm -hmm. That seed will still grow because somebody's gonna come along 
and they'll see it. They'll be like, oh, that's some seed over there. Let me water this seed. And if it was a bad seed, the unfortunate part about it is that seed's still going to grow. It just may not grow into what you want it to. Exactly. The product that it yields may be totally different <laughs> than what you expect or what you wanted. But, you know, be careful about the ground that it's in. And if you're not happy with the product, just, just change the ground. Change, yeah. change, you know, change the aspect. You know, invest in different people. Um, you know, get some other people around you. Yeah, I think the circle thing is really important wow. because even during the time in which we're starting to restart our businesses, everybody's trying to go back um, and go back to normal. But there is no, uh, first of all, there's nothing, nothing no called normal. normal. No normal. And <laughs> nothing called normal. Not as a business owner, there's no, no normal. You wake up and you wake up under the under the umbrella of change every single day. So that's the one thing that's constant in our life is change. But as people are starting to restart and get that going, it's important to have a circle that's um, supportive. But not, um, but not complacent. One that will encourage growth and not, and not um, st um, stifle growth. And I think that even during this time right now, you still have a lot of people who are still not. They're still acting out of the place of fear, so they're not interested in supporting you and, and getting your business going. So, um, what have you done to kind of um, restart your business? Because I know you said, I mean, you've had steady work. Oh yeah. But there is a restart that we all have to do yeah. in this process. Yeah, it's you know, I just I just kind of I kind of took a step back. I took a step back from my business. I was like, okay. Well, I want let me do this first. Let me give a couple of business nuggets. Okay, business okay. nuggets. I'm all if, about that. If you're if you want to start a business, the best business for you to start is a business doing something that you enjoy doing. Yes. If you enjoy doing it, you would you'll want to get up and do it. You know, regardless to the rain that's on the ground, regardless to you know the the customer that's getting on your nerves. You know, this is what you love doing. So, fortunately for me in construction, I love construction. I love what I do. I love taking something that's some people look at like, oh that's horrible and turn it into something, and people are like oh my gosh, this looks better than. For instance, I'm doing a house now. It was a two bedroom, one bathroom over in Sunnyside and it's a four bedroom, two and a half with a two car oversized garage. I have people come by the house. One guy stopped. He said, I used to live here when I was a kid when it was a two bedroom, one bathroom. This house never looked this good. The house is amazing. Oh my gosh, nice. I got to bring my cousin by here so we can see it. And then people in the neighborhood are coming by. The pastor from the church, a couple doors down, he stopped by. Oh my gosh, these things look great. I'm not even finished with it yet. <laughs> I just, I just did the, the outside is done. I'm not finished with the inside <laughs> yet. I'm like, wow. So, you know, I, and that's what I love about construction. It's not, it's not the money that I make in it. It's the, it's the appreciation that of, of my work that other people give it. So I give people a product that they're happy with and it'll last them, you know, for a lifetime. I did a, I, I redid a bathroom for a guy at my church and I think I charged him half the price of what somebody else quoted him. But for a year, I seen this guy at church and every time I seen him, he was like, man, I am so glad you did my bathroom. I love my bathroom. Oh, I need your number. It was like people came over to the house and they were just, they, they wanted to take a shower in my bathroom. <laughs> I was like, no, this is my master bathroom. This is me and my wife's bathroom. You can look at it, but you can't take a shower. <laughs> So, you know, and he was he was an older guy, but man, I, I love Mr. and Mrs. Cartwright, Mr. Rodney and Karen Cartwright, great, great people. And um, I redid their bathroom and he just appreciated it. And, you know, in business for me, that's what I love about construction. I love turning over a product that a person can continue to appreciate time and time again. So, so the product that you put out, is it something that you would live in and something you would be proud to have as your own? That's a great question. I do not turn over any project that I would not take for myself. Exactly. So if I'm not happy with the work, if I come in and one of my contractors has done something that I wouldn't take for myself, we're fixing it before I leave. And I don't I don't care what it's going to cost me to fix it, mm -hmm. but we're going to fix it before I leave. And, you know, that's another thing with me. I pay attention to details, so I try to catch those things before it even gets to that. So while it's still in the early stages, I'm like, hey, I don't like this. This, right. not, this is not going to come out right. When and one thing about me, I, I work in construction, and you have a lot of general contractors that don't self-perform. I can self-perform any project, any part of the job that I contract out: plumbing, electrical, mechanical, texture, tape, float, framing, uh, foundation, 
pretty much anything that I do in construction, I can self-perform. Do I want to? No. Will I? No. Um, as far as me mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, I'm not licensed, so therefore I can't do those. Okay. But if my plumber cuts out, can I finish? Oh, yeah. My electrician cuts out, can I finish? Most definitely. If my mechanical guy cuts out, can I finish? Yeah, I can get up there. <laughs> and I'm not afraid to do it. So that's, you know, for me, it makes it easier for me in construction because I can look at something and say, hey, this is not going to come out right. Let's fix this. And then even if the client's like, oh, my gosh, I love it. I'm looking at it. I said, no, it's a spot right there. I'm going to fix that spot before we go. Oh, no, no, no. You don't have to do that. Howard, you don't have to bother. No, I do. I do because I'm not going to have your friends coming over here with the same eye I have. Looking. Yeah, your contractor did a good job except for that spot right there. Yeah. Because <laughs> let me tell you, because uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> I have learned some, a lot of stuff. I've never bought a house before until I bought one here. And I bought this house, and I've been in it for about eight years. And um, so since I've been there, I got halfway through it. You know, you go through and they do the walkthrough and they point you in the direction that they need you to see. Yeah. <laughs> and less in the direction in which you're trying to look. Mm -hmm. So as I'm going and I'm doing a new painting and things like that, I start noticing shortcuts mm -hmm. in this. And I was extremely irritated because I was like, why would you give me this and you know that this isn't right? And at some given point in time, it's going to fail and then I'm going to recognize it. And then, of course, you're not going to come back and you're not going to acknowledge you're wrong in this. So that's why I asked the question because a lot of people, they give out product that they wouldn't live in themselves. Yeah. And then those are the, not the contractors or the people or that's business owners who you want to do business with. There, there are a lot of good contractors in Houston. There are a lot of great contractors in Houston. Um, are there some bad ones? There are a bunch of bad contractors in Houston, too. Mm -hmm. um, there are some contractors. And, and I mean, every job is not the greatest job. Um, and people, people learn. I wasn't the best contractor. I wasn't the same contractor I am now five, six years ago. Because there's uh, growth involved in business. Very much so. Um, have I had some bad deals? I think on hand, I've had one, one or two bad deals. Um, and then I see contractors who continually take money from people, don't complete a project. Really, I, I thank those guys. Let me thank the bad contractors because they, they make it easy for me. When, when my clients meet me, um, my clients generally become family because they're like, Howard, man, you're, I, I just haven't, where were you at three years ago? I was right. like, I said, I might not have been ready for this, this particular job three years ago. I wasn't ready for this juncture of my life. So we met at the time that we were supposed to meet because I would have been that contractor that you just got rid of. So, right. so you know. So you mentioned another point, I don't, point in time. And I, go. I say that to say that just because you have a bad contractor four or five years ago, that hopefully that person has evolved. He's ran into somebody that says, hey, you can't keep doing this. You know, I never took anybody's money and ran off with it. I had one project where a lady wasn't happy with contractor we had he ran off with like twelve thousand dollars i think i gave her like eight grand out of my pocket back on the wow. job which i didn't have to do yeah you don't so you know i'm i'm that contractor that i want things to be right i don't i sleep well at night because i don't take anything from anybody um i don't try to treat anyone bad and you know that i was that was one of the other things i was going to talk about you were talking about personal development I am a stickler for personal development. If it's something I can do to work on me, then hey, if you gotta tell me, and you know, I'm 6'4", 300 pounds, you, don't be scared. Just come <laughs> to me and say, Howard, you know what, buddy, the way you did this was not right. And I'm that guy. I've I've got mad at somebody in traffic and, and, and be ready to flip them off and go off on them, and then I get down the street and I'm like, for what? Why did I let that person rent time in my head for free? They don't write any more checks or pay any my bills. You know, so that's another nugget. Stop letting people rent time, rent space in your head for free. Don't don't if a person cuts you off, he didn't hit you, no harm, no foul, let them keep going. He doesn't write the paycheck. He doesn't pay the bills. Let yeah. them keep going. I and I'm getting to a point where I don't say it doesn't happen. I'm just getting to a point where the amount of time is, is shorter and shorter. So what I normally do for those folks, and I'd like to thank them because I've been able to grow from it. 
So what I normally do is like, man, I hope you get there safe and sound because whatever emergency you are chasing behind, <laughs> woo, baby, I hope you, I hope it works out for you. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you never know what other people are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so that might be a pregnant lady in that, yeah, in that exactly. car. Or they might that they, they might have gotten the worst news ever. Mm -hmm. And and they're and they are um they have tunnel vision. They're looking so, for an outlet. I know. <laughs> and don't, you don't are it. That outlet. <laughs> you are it. Yeah. So yeah, I think that yeah. that's really good. Personal development for sure. Yeah. We all grow. And I, I I know I love the fact that that we're willing to take a look at ourselves mm -hmm. and grow on our own and learn from the mistakes. Because I I, I I just don't like when people say I've made these mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's I don't necessarily consider them mistakes. mistakes exactly. They're lessons because mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't test the limit, mm -hmm. you never understand that there's a cliff there or yeah. there's a there's a pitfall so, there. This is one thing <laughs> I always tell people, and I, I refer this to positive and negative. If you look around, everything is positive and negative. Electricity has positive and negative. Yeah. Batteries have positive and negative. People have positive and negative. So. You will never, you will never understand good if you've never experienced bad. Yeah. You'll, 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 you'll know that it's good, but you won't have anything to gauge it against. You won't know mm -hmm. the level of good that you have. Absolutely. So, without the positive, there's, there's, there is no negative. Without the negative, there is no positive. And if you just that, that, that simplicity of life travels over to everything you see without a positive and a negative on the battery your car will not start mm -hmm. that's correct <laughs> so you need both and that's what I, so that's the yin and a yang the good Definitely. and the bad the up and the down everything that, has an opposite that's what gives you balance yes for sure that's what gives you balance so that's gravity that, talking about the mistakes don't look at the mistakes in your life as mistakes look at them as balance yes this is, Okay, so great. I'm glad you said that. That's nice. <laughs> Wait, that just processed really quick in my head. That's nice. That's balance. I'm going to need them to lay off the negative, though, on my yeah, side. Yeah. But this true, this balance, because I've had some experiences here in the last few weeks where I've been trying to learn some new stuff. And I tell you what, every time I walk away, I'm like, oh, I should just pull out this chunk of hair because this is so bad. <laughs> but what I did learn is that it's like you just have to put certain things in place to help my had help I not had that experience. I would not have known to do a couple extra steps to avoid that pitfall for the next time. And so the next group, the next one is just getting that done. Yeah. And so that's a that's a really good point. I and, really like that. And the thing about the thing about energy, most positive and negative is all energy. Um, energy is not uh, created or depleted. It's only transferred. Mm -hmm. So just because you receive negative doesn't mean you have to give negative. Yep. So true. you can receive the negative, but transfer that energy. Transfer it into a positive energy or just down it to where it becomes positive. You have to, you have to learn, like I say, you have to learn the balance. So yep. when I get negative energy in, I know how to process it and send it out as positive. Yep. You know, I don't. I don't send out. I don't send out. I. I try very hard not to send out anything negative. I don't speak negative over my life. I don't speak negative over people's life, because one thing I've learned is that the power of life and death is in the tongue, and the key word there is the power. So you have a choice. You have a choice to speak life, or you have a choice to speak death. So. Well, I like that. That's. I choose cool. life. Okay, so here's <laughs> a, we're gonna end here, right? So this is one last point I'm gonna make. So. You ever try to hug an, an angry person? You see what happens when you try to hug an angry person? Yeah, it, it's it's hard. It's hard, but eventually they melt. They have to. They have because it's because it's like because you're meeting you're meeting them with an energy that's different from the one that they're trying to give out. Yeah. So if you hug someone, and I know right now we cannot hug anybody. No. But when you hug somebody, or when you and when you're so kind to them, and they're so they're belligerent and so nasty towards you, but you're like, but it's okay. I understand you're having a hard time, and I understand, and I you just need this, so I'm gonna sit here and hold space with you, mm -hmm. right? And then it just kind of melts away. Mm -hmm. So I think that's how we, you know, that's definitely a balance. And the one, one last thing, I've gotten on a call, and I was giving it to the AT and T lady or the the Xfinity lady, and she's like, well. That's it. I was like, but this is not my bill, and this is not right, and I'm a customer, and you shouldn't do this, and you shouldn't do that, and this should be this, and this should be that. And then in the midst of it, I know it's not your fault. I understand you just work there, so don't take it personal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and then it's just like, doo -doo -doo -doo. So yeah. She's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for that because 
I almost took it personal. No, it's not personal. This yeah. is Xfinity, and you are just the employee that I get to talk mm -hmm. to at this particular time. Right. So. And that's it. And so, unfortunately, <laughs> you, you received my wrath. And yeah. I'm sorry that that's how that it was you, but don't take it personal because yeah. it has nothing to do. I've done that, too. You're great. I like talking to you, Howard. This Thank is you. awesome. Thank you. So, Thank go ahead and tell everybody where they can find you. Oh, uh, Howard Johnson, 707 Management, LLC. Um, my website is www707llc.com, and that's the number seven, the number zero, and the number seven, llc.com. My phone number is 281-726-1028. Email address is H is in Henry, T is in Tom, J is in Jackal, 707 at yahoo.com. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. You're and an awesome guest, I tell you. One more plug. It's free to talk to me. Oh, wow. Oh, man. I'm going to have to go ahead and do that. We'd like to thank our sponsors. Southwest Airlines is a proud air travel sponsor of Tri-County Regional Black Chamber of Commerce. And we also like to thank Primacore Business Solutions. Yes. Howard, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thank you for having me. Anytime you guys want me, I will make my schedule available to come here. I love this. I love sitting down talking. I love giving out information. I like helping people. That's awesome. So do I. Yeah. So everybody have a great and glorious day, and we'll see you next time on the podcast. Bye-bye. <laughs>